Welcome back to Odyssey Academy, and we are moving on to lesson number six, which is on focus and style, right? So how do we have some sort of focus on a long-term solution? And also, what is this mysterious element called style that teams have such a hard time understanding? It's not that hard to understand. You just have to know what it is, right? Uh, so we're going to introduce you to style in a clear way so that you know what it is, and then you'll be able to understand it as you go about solving your long-term problem. So today's agenda includes understanding scoring and point allocation. It's kind of where we left off when we talked about your specific long-term problem solution process. Uh, there's a teaching moment here about rubrics and evaluation which I want to discuss. Uh, and then I'm going to introduce you to what style is, what it actually is. And we'll talk about this important idea of avoiding style and long-term point overlap. I'll explain when we get there. And then, of course, just kind of reiterating the point of points. <laughs> points, points, points. So we're going to come to that at the very end of this lesson. So just starting out with this idea of focus. Uh, when I'm talking about focus here, what I'm saying is where should your team's focus be as you're solving your long-term problem in Odyssey of the Mind? Uh, well, it turns out because OM is a competition and you will be judged in front of a panel of judges, uh, your focus should be on the points, right? So when we think about where you're spending your time, where you're spending your money and your resources, something that's probably gonna get you a lot more points should be where you're spending a lot of your time thinking, coming up with creative ideas, working on the actual tangible device or costume, whatever the case may be, um, and not spending so much time on things that don't get a lot of points or maybe don't even get any points, right? So uh, keep that in mind as you're, you're going through the long-term problem, as you're working on the various components that you include in your long-term problem because it's gonna help you focus your time and your resources while solving the problem. So again, what you wanna ask yourself, a couple of questions you could ask yourself are, uh, what actually gets the most points in our long-term problem? Have you allocated your time to match the points? Are you spending more time on things that get more points and less time on things that get less points? Can you enhance the scored elements even more, right? So for the elements that are required that are a lot of points, can you take a step back and say, is there anything else we can do to get more points or to make it more creative or more effective, whatever the case may be, more original? Uh, are you wasting time and resources on non-squared items? And we're gonna come back to this when we talk about style, because maybe there is something that you wanna include in your solution that's not required or scored by the long-term problem that you want to get points for. You can do that in style. But if you're not gonna use something as style and it's not getting any points in your actual long-term solution in terms of the, the section D scoring, then you really have to ask yourself the question, am I wasting my time and energy and perhaps resources or money on this particular element? All right, uh, so as I said, I hinted here, is there something you want scored that is not yet scored? Uh, that is something we could consider for style, and we're gonna go through what style is in just a second. Now, I'm gonna pause here for a second, mom, dad, teacher, coach, or student, if it's directly to the student, and say there is a teaching moment in focusing so much on the scoring. We're not focusing your attention on scoring for the purpose of winning a trophy. That's great. Remember, we talked about winning a trophy is wonderful. You get to advance to the next level of competition, and we would love for you to do that. That's fantastic. But the teaching moment here is in life, in jobs, in college, at school, you are judged, you are assessed based on a rubric or an evaluation of some kind, right? That's how you are evaluated. So the reason it's important to know this is that if you are taking your first job right out of college and you are going to get an annual performance review of how good, how well you were doing uh, at your job, excuse me, how well you're doing your job, that is going to be based on some rubric or evaluative criteria. So good advice, life advice is, if you take a job, it's very helpful to know what your manager is going to be looking at when he or she is assessing your performance a year from now. Because if you know these are the 10 things my, my boss, my manager is looking at a year from now, then up front, if you know it up front, all year long, you could be thinking to yourself, am I checking the boxes off on all 10 of these things that I'm going to be judged on at the end of this year? So if you think about that logic, it works the same way in OM, right? So if we know that a competition, judges are going to be sitting there looking for these 12, 15 things, then I know as somebody solving the problem, 
or the months that I'm solving the problem. I need to be focusing on those 12 things and making sure I'm doing everything I can to get the points for those 12 items. So when I'm judged months from now at competition, I know that I have those points. I, I'm better positioned to get those points, right? So it's a really strong teaching moment here of why scoring matters so much. It matters for Odyssey of the Mind, yes, because it's a fun competition, you know, you'll win if you get the points, but it matters in life because if we know in college, at uh, our first job and beyond, on what we're being evaluated that will better prepare us to allocate our time, our efforts, our energy, our limited resources more efficiently uh, so that we can make sure we're delivering on whatever it is we're expected to, to deliver on, right? So that's the teaching moment uh, to put there. Now, let's shift conversation a little bit to what is style? Now, there's a reason I put focus and style in this same lesson, because a second ago, remember, I said, maybe there's something you want to do, you want to include in your solution that is not a required element of your long-term problem. Good news, you have the option to do that and you can put it in style, right? So this is how it's all related. So let's talk about what style is because it's super confusing for most people. And I don't want it to be confusing because it's not that confusing once you have a grasp on it, right? All right, so sort of tautological there. But the idea of what is style, I'm gonna illustrate with an example. You may already know who the painter is of these, these portraits right here, right? Uh, if not, it's Pablo Picasso, famous painter. Cubism was his style, so you can see the style that you see here, those nice jagged edges. Not very realistic, but very distinct, right? So this is what Picasso's artwork looks like. If you have studied him in school already, you probably knew that these were Picasso's. Now, if I presented you with two new paintings that you've never seen before in your life, and I said to you, which one is probably a Picasso? Looking at these two paintings, it's probably the one on the left, right? Because you see that it follows the same style of Picasso's other paintings, right? The one on the right is a Monet, probably, because that's Monet's style. So when we talk about artists and artists having style, clearly we can identify a painting, even if we've never seen it before, as belonging to a particular artist because of his or her style, their unique approach to whatever it is they're doing, in this case, painting, right? Let's do a different example. Uh, you maybe have heard of the Beach Boys. They were a big band, I think like in the 60s and 70s. Uh, they had a lot of beach sounding songs. What do I mean, mean by beach sounding songs? Well, certain guitars, like a wah-wah guitar and like, uh, even Caribbean, like uh, steel drums, things like this. So they had like a lot of beachy instruments, ukuleles that they would use in their songs. Uh, so when you hear a Beach Boys song, a lot of their songs sound the same because there's a certain Beach Boys style. Uh, and not only did they have the instruments, but they had certain vocal harmonies of the guys in the band that were very characteristic of a Beach Boys song, like a lot of layered male voices. Like if you're a musician, you know what that means, right? The, the ways that the harmonies were arranged. So here's the thing. If you've heard Surfing Safari before, or Summer Days or Surfing USA, lots of surfing themes clearly, you know what these songs sound like. Also, you can look at the album covers. They all have something to do with the beach and the ocean because they're the Beach Boys. So if I said to you, which one of these albums is the Beach Boys greatest hits album? Is it one on the left or the one on the right? Even by looking at the picture alone, you would know the one on the left is probably the Beach Boys. It is. The one on the right is the Bee Gees, different group. Uh, why? Because you see those themes of California, right? There's the beach theme. Uh, also, if I played you a song that you had never heard before, but it had the same sort of really rich harmonies and the same sort of beachy instruments, you would know right away that that's probably a Beach Boys song because that was the Beach Boys style. That's how they approached their songs and their music, right? So that's the way to think about style. It's your unique approach to anything, painting, uh, music, and in this case, your long-term solution. What is your style that you're choosing to solve the long-term solution in? So as I point out here, Question, what is style? My answer is it's your own unique way or theme of solving the long-term problem beyond what is already required, right? So your long-term problem doesn't say you have to have a theme of any kind, right? Like in the problem itself, but that's where style comes in. It allows you to put your unique theme or stamp on your long-term solution and really stand out. Uh, now, I put this screen back up here. This is from way back in lesson one to show you that style is presented at the same time as your long-term solution. So remember, you have eight minutes to perform your long-term solution, style is included in that eight minutes, right? So that's why we have that overlap. It's not meant to be confusing. It's meant to remind you that style is a part of the long-term solution and that happens in the same eight minutes. It's not a separate part of competition. It's all part of that eight minutes. There will be style judges watching your solution focused only on your style elements who score your style elements, right? Those are different from program judges or problem judges. The problem judges are scoring the long-term problem elements. 
things, right? We'll talk more about this when we talk about judging and scoring in a later lesson, but just know that style and long-term are presented at the same time in the same eight minutes, right? It's all part of the same, same delivery uh, for your solution. Okay, so uh, here's a simple, a simply way to talk about or think about style. There are four elements that you get to choose to have scored. Now, it's important to point out that two of those four elements are determined in your specific long term. So when you go to the section of style in your long term problem, there will be uh, a list of five things. The first two are spelled out for you. So your long term problem does select two things that will be part of your style. You don't get to necessarily choose those things, right? There's the categories are determined for you. Uh, category three and four are completely the free choice of a team. You can do literally whatever you want, anything at all. The only exception that whatever you choose cannot already get scored in long term. It's a little bit of nuance there, so I'll explain that in a second. But again, remember, you can choose anything you want as long as whatever you choose is not already being scored in long term. So section D of long term scoring, as long as it's not listed there, you can choose to have it scored for style. Clear? And then number five, style five, is this overall effect of the style elements, right? So you have style category one, two, three, and four, Part five is how well did these four things work together to create this overall theme or look or feeling of your team solution, right? So it's the overall effect of the style that you've chosen. All right, so let's talk about what, what does that mean? How, what is an overall style? Uh, well, the way I, I talk to teams about it is how do you want your team to be remembered, right? These judges at competitions at World Finals, they're judging up to like 60, 70 teams in total, right? So lots of teams per day. If they think about your solution the next day after you competed, a week after you competed, or even years after you competed, there are teams that we talk about as judges that performed years ago because they had a really unique style about themselves. They did something that made them stand out above and beyond what was asked for in the long-term requirements. Uh, so what could that be? Well, here's some examples. Maybe you want to do your whole solution as a musical, like a musical theater Broadway production. It wasn't required in the long-term problem, right? So it didn't say you had to use songs or create anything as a, a music or as a musical, but you as a team decided to make a musical, right? That would be one approach. Uh, maybe you wanted to do a film noir theme. What film noir is the old detective who was calling on the beat and a, a dame walked into the office. That's film noir, right? Black and white, mysterious, kind of like Roger Rabbit, but black and white. Uh, so film noir would be an approach, a theme that your team takes. Long-term problem doesn't say you have to do that, but you decide to do it anyway. So how does that look then? Well, maybe you do a lot of black and white artwork or black and white costumes or the, the dramatic style of how people talked in that time in those videos, right? Uh, that would be an overall effect of film noir. Overall effect, if you maybe decide to have an origami theme as your unique approach, everything you make, your costumes, your backdrops, your props are all origami. That would be an overall effect that you're achieving by making those other four categories fit within the origami theme. Does that make sense? And then it's collectively all together combined, it gives this overwhelming sense of, ah, oh, yeah, the origami team, right? So when I think about you the next day, a week from now, years from now, I think, oh, that was that team that did the origami theme, right? See how style works? Okay. Uh, also be thinking, how can you make your solution stand out? Remember, everybody around the world is solving the same problem and everyone's gonna do it a little bit differently, but how can you deliberately put your own unique stamp on the long-term solution, right? Something that you and only you can do or only you would think to do. Uh, that's the idea of style. Now, I mentioned a second ago, the one thing you have to be concerned about is making sure that your style, the free choices you choose for style, do not overlap with your long-term scoring. So uh, what does that mean? Well, remember, in long-term, section D scoring, all the required elements are listed, and specifically, importantly, specifically, what the judges are scoring about those elements are enumerated for you. They're all listed out, right? And then the points associated with that are listed. So that's critically important because in style, you are able to choose whatever you want as long as it's not being scored already in long-term section D. Now, this gets a little tricky because say, for example, uh, the performance of a narrator character is being scored in your long-term, right? So the narrator character is required and the performance of the narrator is being scored. In style, you would not be able to choose the performance of the narrator character. Why? It's already being scored in long term. But you could say something like the costume of the narrator character, right? So even though that seems like it's part of the performance because it's the costume the narrator is wearing, that the costume is not being scored in long term. So that costume could be scored 
as a style element. Does it make sense? So that's where it gets a little tricky because you can have tangentially related things that are, in this case, like the costume of the narrator is being scored, even though the narrator is being scored for his overall or her overall performance in, in the solution. Now, my warning to you is that even though that's technically okay, keep in mind how the human brain works, right? If I'm a judge and I'm already scoring a narrator character for their performance, and you're asking me to score a very specific component of the narrator character, it could very well be in my mind that I can't disentangle these two things because the human brain just doesn't work like that, right? So you might not get a high score on either thing because I feel like I'm already scoring or double scoring it, even though they're technically two separate things, right? So again, that's just to point out that it's fine to do tangentially related things that aren't being scored in long term. Like maybe there are parts of it are being scored in long term. You can do an offshoot of that for style. But if you do something completely original and different, then you know that it's not going to be kind of like washed away uh, from its, its long term component. That might be a little confusing. The big takeaway here is just know the free choice of style categories cannot be anything that is exclusively scored in your long term section D, right? Don't, don't do that. Make sure that whatever you choose for style is not already being scored in section D of your long term problem, all right? Cool. Last thing here points, points, and more points. So the way you win in Odyssey of the Mind is being the team that has the most points. Now, I pointed out in the very first lesson that there are three ways to get points, right? So you have your long-term solution, which is 200 points, your style, which is 50 points, and your spontaneous solution, which is 100 points. And we're gonna talk about spontaneous separately in a couple of lessons. Uh, now, here's the thing. You have weeks and months to focus on perfecting your long-term and your style solution, right? Unfortunately for spontaneous, you can practice, but you only have the day of competition where you're doing spontaneous to get those points. So when we think about the time it takes to perfect your long-term and style solution. Again, I want to point out this, this tool that you can use for life of rubrics and evaluations. If you know what you're being scored on, if you know what judges are going to be looking at when they're just deciding to give you points or not, then you can design and focus your energy and effort on those specific elements, right? So just keep that in mind as you're solving your long-term problem. Uh, let the points guide your efforts. If something is worth more points and something is worth little or no points at all, it spells out to you what you should be spending your time doing, how to allocate your time, how to allocate your resources. The thing that gets more points obviously deserves more time and attention. Uh, ask yourself, what more can be done, right? So again, when you take that big picture approach, you focus on the details, and you take a step back and look at the big picture again. When you look at the big picture and you look at your scoring and say, mm, okay, this thing, this component is getting a, a bunch of points in my long-term problem. Do I feel like I've done enough to really get those points? If not, I can add more to it until I, I do. That's a question you can ask yourself as you're working on your long-term solution. Uh, and then when it comes to style, be unique. It's your team's chance to put your unique stamp on your solution. If you take that style to the extreme, if you become the strawberry team, and everything is strawberry related, there's strawberry fragrances, there's strawberry design, there's strawberry shaped everything, uh, that then suddenly becomes the strawberry team. If you take it to the extreme, that overall effect score, you'll get maximum points because you've literally done everything you can to reinforce that strawberry theme in those other four style categories, right? So that's the way to be thinking about style and your unique brand or stamp on the solution. And remember, always remember, one of the biggest learning lessons in Odyssey of Mind, what is creativity? It's being original and it's being effective. It's coming up with novel, off the wall, unusual ideas, but ideas that still solve the problem. They still address the spirit of the long-term problem. If you can do both of those things and everything that you execute for OM, for your solution, I guarantee you, you're gonna do pretty well. All right. So let's do our progress report very quickly. Uh, do you, one, understand how long-term points are allocated? Yeah, we talked about section D, right? We understand how the points are different. Uh, and look at your specific long-term problem, right? Because we're talking in general, but look at your specific long-term problem and see where the points are allocated and how they're allocated in your scoring section. Uh, question two, do you have a style that you want to apply in your solution? Have you and your team talked about what kind of approach you want to take? Uh, doing things that aren't necessarily asked for in the long-term problem to create a unique stamp to leave your mark in the minds of the judges. And then question three, do you know the elements that cannot be scored twice, right? So in that sense, when you're choosing your style categories, make sure that you're not choosing something that's already in section D scoring of your long-term problem. Because if it's already there, you can't get points for it over in style. 
You can do those tangentially related things, or you can come up with a whole new idea that's not even related to stuff in the long term. Again, maybe it's something that you wish were being scored in the long term, because maybe you're a really good musician and you wish that songs were in the long term problem, but they're not. Cool. Put it in style. You'll get points for it that way, right? So that's the way to think about style. It allows you to go above and beyond what's asked for in the long-term problem and really create a unique overall theme, effect, brand uh, that creates this overall effect that judges will remember you for long after you've delivered your long-term solution. So uh, where are we? Well, we have used our scoring and limitations to focus and edit your long-term solution. You can check that box. We also now understand more about what style is when we talk about style in OM. So it looks like next up, we're gonna talk about how to write skits. What's this deal with writing a skit? Uh, until then, be safe and I'll see you at the next lesson.